My title tonight is The Land is Yours for the Taking. And I want to mention uh, the passage of Scripture in just a few moments. I heard of a little boy who was walking with his dad through a graveyard. When he read a gravestone, he said to his dad, Dad, do they normally bury two different people in the same grave? And his dad said, why, what do you mean? So the boy says, because it says here, here lies a politician and an honest man. Now, I don't don't understand that personally, but there we go. Um, But society, society needs to be transformed. And I believe that ultimately it's the church that does that. Now here um, we have a passage of scripture in the Old Testament. Now this passage of scripture um, was God's commission to Joshua. Joshua 1 verses 1 to 9. Now God, it was God's commission to Joshua. It was God commission, God commission regarding the land of the Jews. It was given to them. It is always there and it's still there. So what God says here to Joshua is absolutely true. But we as Gentiles, as, as Christians, can look at this and we can see God in a sense giving us the same commission, not so much the same commission in terms of possessing a land, but the same instructions on possessing the society with, with the kingdom of God. Let me read it. Joshua 1, 1 to 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, The Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, you and this people, and into the land that I am giving to them, the people of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot will tread upon, and I have given to you, just as I promised Moses. Now I'm going to stop there. That hasn't changed. And whatever political leaders say worldwide, that land is still theirs. Because God never said, oh, only joking, it's still, it's still theirs. So that's just uh, the, the political facts regarding that. That hasn't changed. And why hasn't it changed? Because God said it, and, and that's there. Um, just as I promised to Moses, from the wilderness, verse 4, and this Lebanon as far as the great river and the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you will cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers and gave them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law that my Moses, that Moses my servant commanded you. Don't turn from it. Uh, from the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate on it night and day, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you you go. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray, Lord, that we can take that commission on, on board tonight. Lord, in a sense, yes, you gave this land to the Jews. You're not giving the, the Gentile Christians a land, but you're saying to them, wherever we go, we need to possess it with the will of God and the gospel and, and the gospel of salvation and bring God's standards in wherever we, we are. And uh, straight away, it says, th- this happened when, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. That must have been a massive thing for them to have to go through. That must have been very difficult. Moses was the man who got the vision from God. You know, right back in Exodus, and he, you know, and he, and you, you read the whole story. In fact, if you go through Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, it's all interspersed with law and history. But there is a particular list of chapters to read if you get the whole story. I've got the list at home, and if you want it, I can give it to you. But, but, um, but this, you know, the whole thing, and obviously, and they go through so many ups and downs, rebelling against God, but then God uh, still um, working with them. And, 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 and giving them the strength to carry on. And the whole thing about, about manna and quail, everything they went through, and now they come to this part in their journey. And Moses has died, and we know why Moses died. We also know that he obviously he wasn't allowed into the promised land because of disobedience. God's incredible, you know, but God's holy. 
God is holy. And we worship a holy God. My pastor, Bob Miles, many, many years ago, um, he was the pastor of the church I was at in Guernsey for about 17 years. And I wasn't there for all that time. But then God called him to the UK and him, him and his wife, Maureen, moved to the mainland. And sadly, his wife, Maureen, was taken with cancer a few years later. And, and it's part of the story. But, he, he, but when him and Maureen left, there was such a, a tremendous influence in my life that it was like we were having to do all that we were started off doing, the prison ministry, youth, uh, missions, everything we did. But, but Moses was dead. In fact, the, what I'm going to mean by that is the person who held it all together, the, the father figure in the church, had gone. And that's what they had to deal with here. They were now doing this and more than ever completely completely and utterly relying on God. Completely relying on God. Listen to this illustration because it, it, it really illustrates this and really brings this out, even though it's, it's talking about animals. For many years, Monterey, a California coastal, coastal town, was a pelican's paradise. As the fishermen cleaned their fish, they flung offal to the pelicans. The birds grew fat, lazy and contented. Eventually, however, the offal was utilised and there were no longer snacks for the pelicans. When the change came, the pelicans made no effort to fish for themselves. They wainted around and grew gaunt and thin. Many starved to death. They'd forgotten how to fish for themselves. The problem was solved by importing just a few new pelicans from a different part of the country and to mix with the group. These pelicans were accustomed to foraging for themselves and they were very good at it. They were placed among the starving pelicans and the newcomers immediately started catching fish. Before long, the hungry pelicans followed suit and the famine was ended. The new pelicans were an example to the original lazy ones. And in a sense, what was happening here with, with Joshua and with, with God's people is that they were now having to do for themselves to a point, to, in a sense, what was done for them. And they had a new direction and they, they're thinking, well, we, we have got to, it's, it's us and God. They still have the priests and everything else, but, but, but they, had to, they had to work um, in a different way. And in a sense... I look around and, I, I, you know, I, I used to really respect, and still do, people like Steve Hill, David Wilkerson, Leonard Ravenhill, and people like that, but they've passed away now. And I don't think, I don't see many Christian heroes, certainly in Great Britain, that we can look at. You, might, you may know some, there may be some men or women or um, pastors somewhere, uh, that's great. But in a sense, we don't have the people there standing um, I think that God doesn't like to have too many heroes around. He's the only hero. These people don't tend to last too long, not because they've done something wrong, but just because it's just all about Jesus. And I think, it, 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 like the pelicans, we've got to be people who, who rely on God ourselves, rely on listening to the Holy Spirit and God telling us new things each day, new rima words, new visions, new prophecies. And when we do, we, we're in less danger of becoming like that and we've got more chance of becoming like that. Something that is fed by the whole, fed by the church, fed by the, the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God gave us a spirit of not of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. I've not got a PowerPoint tonight because I just keep, I've probably sent you too many, but I've got kind of five... I want to bring out five things that God said, God commissioned to Joshua that still encourage us. Because he said to them, every place, the first thing, every place that the sole of your foot will tread, I have given to you just as I have promised Moses. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread, I have given to you. So yes, in a sense, politically that's happened. God gave Israel... To, to God's people, to the Jews, and not one single inch 
has been taken away from them. Well, yeah, they've tried to do it politically, people have, but, but God hasn't taken it away from them, so it's still there. That's a fact. But we, I look at this, in a sense, as, as well, in addition, as God's saying to us, the church, you have a right to be a Christian wherever you are. You have a right to, to, to speak up against ungodly legislation, against things that are going wrong. You have a right to, 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 to see me, to see God, and to see how I, he can bring in peace, how he can bring in a solution to whatever situation we're in. I'm, as I told you before, I'm, all, I'm, always, I'm always called to sort out disputes in the physical street where I live. There's an awful, there's an awful lot going on there, and just families that have got, a, got problems. There was a parking issue in the, in, the, in, the, in the school term that's now finished because we've got a school next door to us. Um, and that was just horrendous. There's a headmaster and quite a few of us out there in the morning making sure people don't park and arguments and stuff. And I just walk out there, I thought, I'm the pastor of this street. Why? Very simple. Because God said, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon you, I have given to you, just as I promised with Moses. It's got nothing to do with me being a pastor of this church. I live in that street, so as a Christian, God's called me to, to, to listen to his Holy Spirit and to make the change there. It's simple. So every place, you know, um, the sole of your foot will tread, I have given to you, just as I promised Moses. And we look at our lives. God has, God has um, a commission to us. To, and it isn't always easy to bring a solution in issues to do with our family. The street we live in, if we do live in a street. The school or college we go to or place of education the place of work we're at, or our daily circle of people. You might see Joe Bloggs on the bus at 9 o'clock and Mrs. Such and Such in Tesco at 10 o'clock, and you probably have a, 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 a daily circle of people you meet. And God is saying to you, every place that the sole of your foot will tread on, here is saying to you, I will give to you to be the change, to be, to be the answer. Because I think that, yes, there are some political parties that may have the answer, some that don't, this, this political situation, this organisation, God uses them to some degree, God uses the godly elements of them, and there are some ungodly elements, but ultimately it's the church's job to listen to the Holy Spirit, read the word, and act, and be the change wherever we are. It's really funny, I, I, didn't, make, I didn't think that I made a difference in the, the, the newspaper office where I used to work. Um, working for a newspaper is a very, very difficult environment because you're working to deadlines and, you know, you're all standing up yelling across the room and everything. There's all, all kinds of stuff going in and an advert you've put on the front page has got to come off because there's, there's a news story. It's just like that all the time. It's a very stressful environment. And I tried to be a Christian in that environment, but many years later, I became part of a Facebook group, a social media group of people that worked there. I did it so that I could share my faith and stuff. And there was a picture of all the staff that were there, and there's me on there, and they'd labelled us all, and they'd labelled me Happy Clappy. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, that's good. That's good, because that's their way of saying Christian. So it did make a difference. They called me Happy Clappy. That's brilliant. I mean, we talked about church and stuff, and, 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 stuff, but, but, and the second thing God says, he says, firstly, he says, every place, sole of your foot will tread. Number two, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. No man. In other words, no one can come before you and be against you without you having the resources from God to go up against it. Look at that passage of scripture in Matthew 10, 16 to 20. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Well, in a sense, just like Joshua and his friends and followers as they went into the promised land. Sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as servants and innocent of doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you'll be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness for, uh, before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious about how you're to speak or what you're to say, for what you will say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. And Jesus said that to the, those who were here, his hearers then. And obviously, you know, Jesus says, obviously, in John, in terms of the Holy Spirit, 
Um, he, will, he will reveal things to you you don't know. And so we've got this incredible, supernatural intervention from God in our lives. Even if we call before kings and governors, even if, if we challenge for our stance on this or that, even if we're accused, wrongly accused. When you're wrongly accused, oh, that, that, you, you might think, oh, my life is over. No, it's not. Well, you know, no man shall be able to stand before you. If you are following Jesus, if you if you're coming before God and say, you know, God, I made a mistake there, and you repent and you keep you keep you keep the connection from the tree to you, and don't become like this. Oh, I've not picked up my Bible for about three or four weeks, and I don't really know if I want to go to church anywhere because there's no church good enough for me, or I might go and do this. You know, if we keep the connection then God will feed us with that supernatural element of him, of him and his, 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 his life in us to change us and work through us. The third thing, and I'll go back through this, is he said to Joshua and he says to us, I will not leave you or forsake you. I will not leave you or forsake you. That's good news, isn't it? It's really good news. It's absolutely brilliant news to know that he will not leave us or forsake us. Psalm 16, 8 says, <coughs> I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Have you ever been shaken? I would imagine that over this last day or two, three, four, five days, or last week or last two weeks, you may have had things in your life that will have shaken you and worried you. You know, or you've, or you've gone to bed feeling great and woke up at five, six, seven in the morning feeling as low as possible. That's quite normal. That happens because of chemistry in the body. Simple explanation. But at the same time, the devil uses that uh, to attack you. Ah, you know, you're, you're depressed. This will never happen. But you need to come before God and, um, and realize that he will not leave us or forsake us. He is there. And I think the more... So I learned very early on in my Christian faith, the more time I give to God, the more real he is in my life. Because if I give him time, I'm more aware of his presence. Prayer is important. Prayer is so important. It, and it's so incredibly important. I will not leave you or forsake you. There are a few different people here tonight, so I'm going to share this illustration. And I, 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 Some of you might have heard it before, but it's so precious. And I'm not going to spend long on the other points, but this is incredibly precious that I will share it again. I would imagine there's five, six, seven of you who may not have heard this. It's incredibly good. Uh, the Inuit um, indigenous Indian group in North America um, had a custom when their young boys grew to be a certain age. When they got to the age of 16, they had to go through the rite of passage. The, what, the kids below the age of 16 were never told what the rite of passage was. But all that happened is the person had to go through the rite of passage, they finished it, they were then, they were then considered within that community as being a man, and then they could not pass on that secret to people below. And here's what happened. On their 16th birthday, they had to, be, they had to be, sit in the middle of a forest, a dark forest at night, and from a certain time to a certain time in the morning, they had to, had to sit there blindfolded and not move and not do anything. They, 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 they could not move. So they're not allowed to tell anybody else about this. No kids under the age of 16 um, knew anything about it. They had to sit there in the dark forest all night. They could have been bears or wolves. They could have been anything. So in a sense, if you're going there, you, you, you sit, you're a 16-year-old boy, you sit down, your blindfold goes on, you're thinking, my goodness, I could be killed. But you sit there. And trembling, this boy hears every single sound throughout the night and gets there finally gets to the morning even the sort of the sound of doors slamming <laughs> don't do that um you know, there are no wolves around here um but he has to sit there and finally the first light of morning he takes his blindfold off to realize that unbeknown to him his father has been sit there, sat there with a rifle five feet away from him all night i will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Number four, the fourth thing that God says to us is this book of the law shall not depart from your, mind, your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night. In other words, to us, God's word has to be so central to our lives um, 
I, I don't ha read any personal devotion books personally. I just read the Bible. That's me. You know, uh, there's some great personal devotion books. Read them. There's the, the, um, the UCB stuff at the back is good. I, uh, there's four devotional, so, sorry, um, eight devotional writers that I really like, and I regularly read their stuff. They're called Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, James, Peter, John, and Jude. Um, James, Peter, J yeah, um, Jude, John, and Jude. So, writers of the New Testament and the Old Testament, uh, the Word of God. I just, I just read the Word of God. There's some great devotion books. Occasionally I do. But I, I get something new each time I read the Bible, which God almost knows I need that day and gives me strength. But also I use the Bible to... Um, I use the Bible just to guide me. You know, I, I just, somebody once said to one pastor uh, many years ago, uh, said, it's, how do you know that God exists? That's a, that's a fairly simple question. And his response would have shocked you. He said, I know that God exists because it says so in the Bible. In the Bible it says God exists, therefore I know that he exists. Now, in a sense, he was, he was speaking a rima word, in the sense that what he's basically saying is the word of God is true. You know, and of course, you, you accept that in faith, and, you, and, and then you start on a relationship with God, and then you know he's true. You experience that in your lives. But I'm, he's saying to, the, to Joshua, um, the word of God as it was then, as they had it, just base your lives on it. So the word of God for me has to be my, has to be my guiding book for my life. I can make beef burgers easy. But there's a particular cookbook that Jackie's got somewhere that if I follow the instructions, I can do it. We've currently got a, one of those TV unit tables, you know, the ones you buy uh, from Ikea or wherever. And you get the, you get the white... They look, the instructions look something like this, don't they? You've, you've, all, you've all done it. And you get about a million th things out. I always get about 10 minutes into it and put something in the wrong place. Then I've got to reverse back again. And Jackie said, is he going to be ready yet? I said, well, maybe tomorrow. You know, you, you're thinking about it all night. But if I followed the instructions perfectly, everything would go well. If I follow the instructions perfectly, I've got a better chance of my life going well. Do not let this look of the law depart from your mouth. And finally, the fifth thing he says, and I'll go through all these things again, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Be strong and courageous. If we are, we are allowed to be strong, we're allowed to not fear. Be strong and be courageous. Every single time I have faced something in the week that I am dreading, either a meeting or a situation, I've learned to put an absolute ton of prayer into it. Now really, to, to go, go before God and play some worship music and, and just sit there on my own, read the Bible and talk to God and confess and re repent if, it, if it's my fault and just really get God into it. And 99 times out of 100, the event goes incredibly well. In fact, it always does. And, and, and God just makes it easier and sorts it out. He has commanded me and he commands us to be strong and courageous. So God talks to the church in the same way as he talked to Joshua. Now, not, look, please get me wrong, don't get me wrong then. You know, the church has not replaced the, the, the Jews. That has not happened. God, replaced, God requires all, all people, Gentiles and Jews, to come to repentance. But they're still his people. But we are engrafted branches. We are by the grace and mercy of God um, engrafted. And so, but, but God is not giving us a land like he's given the Jews, but he's, he's, he's giving us, in a sense, he's giving us the world to spread the gospel in. And he says to us, he says um, that I want you to go out there and have this attitude that, um, that Joshua had. And these five things again that he says to us, every place the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you just as I promised Moses. Number two, no man she may be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Number three, I will not leave you or forsake you. Number four, um, place importance of, the, of God's word, book of the law is called, called here, and meditate on it day and night. And five, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. And time and time, time and again, 
if you take these principles to heart, and I just want to, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, and just apply them in your daily situations. And let's be honest, daily situations so, sometimes are absolutely horrible and difficult, aren't they? But if we apply that to God, uh, if, we apply, if we apply these situations in our lives, sorry, um, God will, you know, we'll see God do the most incredible things. I've got other things I can share, I'm not going to do it now. I just want to read um, something from Ephesians 6, verse 10, and I'm going, to, I'm going to give a call. If anyone wants to pray, who wants prayer, we can just come out. We'll do it that way. Ephesians 6, verse 10 onwards, just a few verses. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual force, force, forces of evil from the heavenly places. I just want to leave that there. God calls us, us as we face the future, as we face the, the land that we are in, as we face Romsey, Hampshire, Great Britain, the part of England that we're in. God causes us to be just like Joshua and to possess the land. In other words, when I say possess the land, uh, to to bring uh, the kingdom of God to the forefront in everything that we do. I just want to look on the keyboard and play, play some stuff. If you're in prayer tonight, we'll pray for you. God told me this morning just to get people to come out and, 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 and pray for the sick. So if you'd like, if you'd like prayer um, for absolutely anything, come forward. Um, and we'll do it, you know, if... Um, We'll see how it goes and see what God wants to do. Lord, I pray right now for every single person. But I pray, for, Father, for those watching at home, that they may know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to heaven, that a relationship with him is the only way for forgiveness. I pray in the name of Jesus, that if anyone's watching right now, Lord, you will prompt them to contact us on the YouTube channel, that you will prompt them to think about their eternal salvation and realise that only a relationship with Jesus can save them. And I pray for anyone here tonight, Lord, who has listened to this, help them to realise, Lord, that we can be strong and courageous. And I pray, Father, that if there are people here right now who would like prayer or healing for anything, that they will come forward and that your Holy Spirit will take over. In Jesus' name, amen.